hello there and welcome back to another learning series with mr knight now today's lesson is on electron configuration now this lesson will be pretty much short and quite easy because i'm going to go through three concepts with you then look at some examples and then after that you'll you will be doing an activity at the end and then we'll be on our way now the first thing just to remind you what electron configuration is an electron configuration represents the distribution of electrons in the orbitals of atoms right now to understand how electrons are distributed the first thing you have to remember is how do you write these electron configuration and so there are three things that you must know three things and the three things for example, the 2p6 represent a, represents a part of an electron configuration, okay? And so the first step in this is to know what these numbers and letters actually mean. And so the first number always represents the shell or the energy level that you can find these electrons on. Now the p, for example, represents the type of orbital that these electrons will be on now the six represents the number of electrons that will be on this particular type of orbital and so once you establish this and know to use this we're pretty much on our way and so the next concept that i want you to know is the number of electrons that can be on each type of orbital and this should be a reminder based on what based on what we have been doing before and so remember that the s orbital can hold up to two maximum electrons while the p type of orbital can hold a maximum of six electrons the d orbital holds a maximum of 10 electrons and by now you should realize a pattern that you increase by four as you go along so s after s comes six and then after p comes 10 and so therefore f will be now 14 electrons now the next concept is based upon off bar principle and let's look at this and this is talking about how electrons are filled on energy orbitals and always we always fill the lower energy orbital first and so to distribute them we must understand that there are seven possible shells because remember n represent the number of shells or energy level and this is in reality of course remember you can always go beyond this but in terms of the practicality of the number of elements that exist we only stop at the seven shell now again we have to remember the subshells or the type of orbitals that are there s p d and f and so if n is equal to one we can only have the s orbital remember there is no p no d or f the same pattern continues if there is the if we're talking about the second shell then the second shell holds only two types of orbitals and that's the s and the p so there is no d no f and remember again we don't go beyond the f for the elements that are in the um, periodic table but of course in theory you can go beyond that and so where n is equal to three we'll have our um, s p d and um, no f and if we go to our fourth shell then we have our s our p our d and f now the similar way we go for our fifth shell we can all go all the way up to f now for a six shell we will stop at d and then our seventh shell we will stop at the p and so if you notice the pattern the first one to fill now we go diagonal so we have our s one s will fill first then we go to our 2s then 2p then our 3s and we go diagonal with arrows like that to create that pattern in order of filling 1s first then goes to 2s after 2s we go to 2p after 2p we go to 3s after 3s we go to 3p after 3p then we go to 4s and we continue like that 
along the path of the arrow head to tail all right so once i follow this pattern you will be able to kind of write all the possible um, electron configuration for any element within the periodic table so let's jump into our examples now now first and foremost um remember the three concepts that we have been through and we're going to apply them now to these examples so the the first example we're going to look at is sodium and sodium has 11 electrons and so the first thing you'll fill is the 1s and so you write 1s remember s can hold a maximum of two electrons we're working with 11 electrons so we go on two out of 11 and so the next one we go to our 2s and 2s again holds a maximum of two electrons so therefore there are four electrons so far and then after 2s goes our 2p and 2p holds a maximum of six electrons so far we have if we should count them is two four and six that means that is 10 total electrons so far so we know we only need one more so we're gonna go to the 3s and so 3s as you know that s can hold up to two but we only have one so therefore we have 3s1 now what i want you to also remember is the valence shell remember the valence shell would be the is um, energy level and in this case it is three so this will bear our valence electron sodium has a valence electron of one so i put this in red so you actually could see it there's only one valence electron there for sodium and of course you know this will be in group one as well now let's jump into our next example and our next example here is cobalt cobalt has 27 electrons again we start with 1s and so we have 1s2 s contains a maximum of two electrons then we go to our 2s again maximum of two electrons for all the s orbitals then after 2s goes our 2p and p holds maximum six electrons so far we only have 10 we're working with 27 so we have a way to go and so after 2p comes our 3s so follow the arrows and so our 3s s again holds maximum of two electrons after our 3s then we will jump on to our 3p and our 3p again p contains six electrons okay so so far we have only have 18 electrons so we have a way to go so after 3p comes our 4s and 4s again holds uh two electrons so far we have 20 electrons we have seven more to go and after 4s we'll jump on to our 3d and so jumping on to our 3d what we'll have here now d holds up to 10 however we only have seven remaining so put the only the seven electrons here not 10 even though d can hold um 10 we put only what we have which is seven remaining now what is unique about this electron configuration as well if if you notice it this 4s is right here and this is just based on the energy orbitals now what i want you to remember in terms of the valence shell now we're going to realize that four is the highest energy level and so therefore this will be our valence electrons so cobalt has two valence electrons okay now let's look at one last example here and so this example here will be for nitrogen and nitrogen has seven electrons in total and so therefore to put these on we start with our one s first and s again remember two maximum electrons for our s orbitals and so after two after one s comes our two s and again s holds maximum of two electrons after our two s we go to our two p working with seven we only have four we need three more so go to our um two p and two p here again p can hold up to six but we only have three to work with to put over three electrons there now what i wanted to notice with this now is that we have two 
and 2. That means this is the same shell. So our valence shell must contain these two um, subshells. Okay. So a total of the 2s2 and also the 2p3 will be our valence shell. And so therefore we have a total of 2 plus 3, 5 valence electrons for nitrogen. Okay. All right, so yes, now going through these examples, I mean, you could go back over them to make sure you understand them properly and see the order of filling. Now, what we're going to do now, I want you to do something for me. I want to look at the periodic table for organ and look at the number of electrons. Look where it sits on your periodic table before we actually finish up this example here, right? And again, we'll soon be on our way. Now, organ has 18 electrons, okay? As you have noticed, and based on what you have checked your periodic table, it's in group 8. That means it is a noble gas. So I want to look at this one very closely. And so starting with the 1s again, okay, s is, so it's 1s2. Then we go to our 2s, and again, s is 2, so therefore it's 2s2. Then after that, we jump on to our 2p, and so far, let's check, we have what? 10 electrons, so we need at least 8 more, okay? So let's go. So after 2p goes to our 3s. And 3s again, 2. And we could check as we go along. So far, we only have 12. We need 6 more. So after 3s, we're going to jump on to our 3p. And 3p, remember, is 6 electrons will be on our p orbital. So this one is completely filled. Now, what I wanted to notice with organ now, this is our 18 electrons um, that we presented here. And what I wanted to notice is the 3 and 3. These 3 mean that they are on the third shell or third energy level, okay? And so a total of 8 electrons will be on this valence shell. And the reason I say check your periodic table, you'll notice that, hey, all the 8 electrons will be here. That means these orbitals are completely filled. And that's why it is classified as a noble gas. Because they have, um, organ has completely filled um, orbitals. Okay, so the S is completely filled and the P is completely filled and they are on the same shell which is a valence shell. Hence, organ is a noble gas. Okay, so that's just a concept I want to show you there before I actually finish up with you. Now, the next thing I want to do here now is to look at some examples that I want you to try in the home. So pause the video at this time, try all three and then come back for the answers. I have the answers there for you, so don't worry. Um, now I suspect you have, that you have checked, um, you have completed them. So let's check to see if you're correct. And there we go, um, iron, oxygen, and sodium. Okay, so great. Now I want to, I didn't see what you've done, so you have done it. Um, so what I wanted to do for me now as a proof that you really understand this, I want to do something for me. This is a special for you today, okay? So what I want to do is, to, is for you to answer this one, nickel, and put it in the comment section. I'll check it and comment on it to make sure that you're correct. Just create a discussion right there. Everybody complete this, put it in, in the comment section and I will check back with you, okay? So at this time, um, it was very nice to be with you. Very, very short and easy lesson and it's really fun to do quantum numbers and electron configuration with you. Um, and so this is pretty much our second to last lesson on quantum numbers and electron configuration. So my dear people, again, I will catch up with you very soon. Um, as I come back with some more questions, really, on quantum numbers. So, I see you next time. So, keep on being safe until we meet again.